All right, David Harry here, and yet another problem with the M4 Pro Mac Mini with DaVinci Resolve. Now, what it is, this is actually maybe like an extension from my previous video, which has only just gone live. So there's a lot more information about a particular problem that I had had on the previous video. But it just in a nutshell, what it is, I was doing a bunch of exporting from uh, DaVinci Resolve on the M4 Pro Mac Mini and out of seven encodes all seven of them or I think the first six they all failed and crashed the machine however I did get to do one that was like completed and it didn't crash so I don't know if this was like me seventh or me eighth go at trying to do it however the file that was produced from the encode was completely and utterly destroyed so what I'm going to do in this video is show you the results of the file and like just the kind of corruption that was going on because it was really really weird so let me show you this okay so getting into this then here is the file that managed to export but is problematic okay so let me just try and play this in quick time Okay, so as we can clearly see there, that is an absolute mess. I don't know what's that like, one frame per second or something. Okay, now before I just throw this into Resolve so we can have a look at it in Resolve, let me just point something else out here. So in this folder here, this ProRes422HQ file, this is actually the source file, right, that I've been using for these particular tests. So this is like the master 8K120 file, as it were. Now, this was prepared on my M1 Max MacBook Pro. Now, see this file here? This effectively is like the same export as this one here, but this one was from my MacBook M1 Max. Now, the thing with this, it's 400 megabits per second, so it's a much higher bit rate than what this one is. But the actual ENCO parameters are identical as far as like all the stuff for H.265 is concerned. Now, look at this. Hold on. Hold on, wait there. Let me just move these markers here. Otherwise, it'll go into slow-mo. Now, watch this. Okay, so as we can see, that plays perfectly well. So just to be doubly clear, this file here was done from the same source as what this file was, but this file here was done on my M1 Max MacBook Pro. Now, let me just open up Resolve here. And what I'm going to quickly do is just bring in that file, which it did export, with, but which is clearly broken. So let me just do import media here. Uh, let's see on the desktop where are we so it is test seven or is it test five no test seven okay so let me bring in test seven let me change the frame rate on the input there and look at this <laughs> there's something really odd with that file that it doesn't like so let me just select the file and if i go to the file manager now the file manager is telling us that it is you know it's a h.265 file it's 120 frames per second basically or 119.88 and there's its resolution However, it's just not handling the file at all. Now, if I bring it into the timeline here, as we can see, there's some thumbnails being generated. Now, it might pop up if I go through it in the timeline. Okay, maybe it's not going to pop up. Okay, right. I've already tried this test before I did the video just so that I know what I could show you. Uh, but when I did the test before, it was randomly showing video as it was coming through the timeline here. Let me just check something here as well. Hold on. Um, as far as the output is concerned, in fact, let me just match the output to what it should be. So that's 4K UHD, uh, sorry, 8K UHD, and it's the correct frame rate. So let me just save that. Again, it, 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 <laughs> that file's just not having it, is it? Okay, now just interestingly, let me just import another couple of clips here. So what it is, this one, the 422HQ file, this is my master file that I've been generating like any subsequent copies from for these types of tests. And then also this 400 megabits per second HEVC file was the export from this file using the M1 Max as I've already just explained. So let me just bring both of these in. Okay, let me open them. 
Now immediately we've got thumbnails for them and then if I just put the ProRes clip into the timeline as we're going to see there. Aside from this issue that I've noticed with the playback monitor, um, the file's going to play fine and let me just go scrubbing through the timeline with it. Okay, so buttery smooth scrubbing. Now, if I bring in the HEVC export, which was, once again, it was generated from this file, but it was done with the M1 Max using my typical H.265 or HEVC export parameters. As we will see with this, this will play perfectly as well. Okay, the file itself is playing perfectly, the playback isn't. Now, as far as scrubbing is concerned, because this is an interframe codec, you know, it's not going to scrub properly, but let us just there. Uh, oh, well, I'll give you an example anyway. Okay, so what looks like a stuttery mess there is actually quite normal. What it is, interframe codecs won't scrub the same way as an intraframe codec. So that's like the comparison between HEVC and ProRes 42HQ. However, the, the like the bigger the resolution and the, and the higher the frame rate, that problem is going to kind of like be worse as well as far as scrubbing. But nonetheless, that file is playing perfectly. Okay, so as we can clearly see there then, this file that, I did manage to generate uh, before, well, without it crashing is problematic and I don't know what's going on with this. Okay, so to an end summary, and I'll be pretty quick with this because once again, what I've just shown is basically self-explanatory and I don't think there really is any kind of like more explaining to be had here. However, if you are interested in what you've just seen, go back and watch my previous video. There'll be a link somewhere and it'll be like the last thing that I uploaded before this video. There's a bit more detail in that uh, to do with a couple of other things that might be of interest to you. However, as we could clearly see there, although the file was something that definitely was exported by Resolve, not only was the file corrupted and the Mac had problems playing it, but Resolve wouldn't even see its own file that it exported out. Um, and I think what was a little bit more weird there is that the file was showing as being offline. Now, in other like tests that I'd done where I re-imported the exact same file. Sometimes it would show thumbnails and maybe the odd frame in the timeline. But what you just seen there, then it wouldn't show anything. And it was shown as offline media. Definitely wasn't offline because I just imported it straight into the bin, as you could see, and then just went straight to the timeline from the bin. So yeah, some really weird stuff going on here as far as like, you know, the exporting is concerned. And as I'd said in the previous video, you know, I'm not going to start like, you know, wasting any more time trying to work out what these problems are. And the simple reason why is because I've bought this thing here to replace this thing here, which means that I should be able to just transfer all my, you know, all my sequences over or all my project files over and then relink them to like my SSDs and stuff with all my media on and then just crack on and get on with like my YouTube videos. This is my job. You know, I make videos every day for something or another. And that's what this little device here is meant to allow me to do. So the thing is, I cannot be spending time trying to fault find and you know all these weird things you know because I've got work to do which means I'm going to have to go back to my MacBook here to like carry on doing my daily work by the looks of it anyway what I'm going to do I've like literally got almost two weeks to make a decision as to whether or not I'm going to keep this the intention obviously was not to test it to see if I want to send it back to Apple the intention was this was going to be be my new work machine until the next studio comes out hopefully would say an M4 Ultra in it or something like that um, but I've got to say immediately I'm really disappointed <laughs> I mean I'm trying to put a smile on and have a laugh about it because you know it is a bit funny isn't it going out and spending over two grand on something and it's just crashing and not doing the not doing the exact same thing that a three-year-old computer can do so you know there's some weird stuff going on here anyways if i do find any resolutions to these things or if I, if I can find any more information i'll do some videos about them and stuff like that but like i say what i can't be doing is deep diving and trying to help like you know apple or anybody fault find any of these issues because 
it's not my job to do that. You know, I just bought this to try and like continue where this thing is supposed to have left off. And that is most certainly not the case. Anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments section below and stuff. But I would strongly recommend that if you are definitely looking at buying one of these very specifically for use with Resolve. Now I'm using Resolve Studio. However, I'm going to imagine that there's going to be, you know, pretty much similar issues with like the standard Resolve and Studio. But if that is going to be why you're buying you know a mac mini uh, m4 of any description i would probably hold off just for a little bit and then just check to see what other people are getting up to and maybe if other people are having problems and issues and stuff like that before you commit to buying one i think that might be the sensible move anyways i'm going to dive off if you've liked the video please do give it a thumbs up a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now.